I think something about my work, which I think I've had to come to terms with myself, that is it, it can take very different forms, it may look very different. And I think, um, for me, there are a greater number of similarities between this work and in the presence of angels than might be at first apparent. And I think it has to do with a kind of preoccupation with this notion of interior space and how we construct an image of the world. And whereas 20 years, 20 years ago, or 25 years ago, I was much more concerned with my own kind of personal construction of that, since that time I've been far more preoccupied with how important photography is in the construction of a, a cultural imaginary, and that how photography has to be a little bit more provocative. It can be both. It can take the personal, but also be uh, a bit more challenging and provocative to actually address some of those assumptions that we carry that are purely arrived through, derived through the photographic image. Now this was a, this is a body of work that I began really almost by accident in about 1998. I think when artists become mothers they are uh, preoccupied with domesticity. Um, I was interested in two things. One is the, I think probably what engages me personally in my life also becomes the subject of my work in some way. And I had questions about uh, representation of childhood that were prompted really through my own daughter's response to a suite of images I made. And just as uh, one does, I was photographing my child. Um, she was asleep one afternoon, naked on a couch, beautiful, glorious light. I made a black and white photograph, which I lovingly printed in the dark room. Silk, silken skin looking like perfection to make a mother's heart beat. <laughs> and I found this photograph about a month later in her room, and she had scribbled it over with Byron. She'd actually scored the, the body out completely. And I, I, I really, I was puzzled and delighted, and I asked her about it, and she, absolutely said, that's not me. Don't you photograph me without my permission, and don't you photograph me without clothes on. Finish. And um, I thought, heavens, well, where, in my mind, where did that come from, this idea that somehow childhood has this sense of perfection? There is an image that I carry around that is much more about some manufactured or imaginary sort of space of innocence that I possibly never inhabited, that I like to imagine might exist for my child. And in fact, I thought, well, if I look at my daughter, what's she doing in relationship to me? She's confronting me all the time with kind of shocks to the eye, which are as delightful and beautiful and far more engaging in the present moment. And a little while after, she came kind of running in and kind of poked her tongue out. And I just hadn't had my camera and I lifted it and at that moment I, I, I was not in this group. And uh, she came back and she poked her tongue out right into the camera. And I had a little ring flash on and uh, the image I made was, it was really what defined this little immediate moment of the response of a child to a mother. Not to a photographer, but just. So I um, had my camera at hand and began photographing Ruby, sometimes at the kitchen table often. She might be sitting with her hair in the corner of her mouth, so is another early image, which was like this, uh, they're hard to describe, they just seem to occur. Um, and I, without any particular sense of growing this as a series, I began to pin them up in my studio, just images that I liked. And I was sharing a studio at the time with my husband, who's an architect, and he had a meeting, a uh, group of architects, and they had over their shoulders a series of about six of these. And two of them came up to me afterwards, after their meeting, and said, I'm very, we're very, very concerned about these photographs. We think they're shocking. These are um, they're an affront. How can you uh, 
And I, again, puzzled, and I thought, well, now, what are they seeing? What is the experience? What is the response of an adult male to photographs of a child's mouth? And I realised that there was this, the potential in this work is really into this, this very little insertion into the space between an adult sensibility and what is this, perhaps the space of childhood. So these are kind of my own little, mine and Ruby's little kind of intimate records, which really, en masse and large, really create this sense of little insertion into perceived, uh, imagina or into the imagination of childhood that we, so that's, I loved making them in colour, I loved making them large for that almost the obverse reason to win the presence of angels. These are kind of intimate moments. They are of the everyday. They are asides. They are like uh, a list of the memories that you might call up when you're not thinking or romanticizing or sentimentalizing somehow what childhood might be. So there's a sense of the list. Uh, the uh, translation into kind of loud and slightly amplified colour, which cannot take you anywhere past the present moment. So, whereas black and white, I think, can create a space in which uh, probably what's beyond the frame is what can consume you. Colour in this way is actually very much about the present, about the present moment. I like the ambiguity and I like the way they are misread. And I, what I say true to was a, uh, a playfulness, so that each of these, as they occurred, and uh, sometimes Ruby created them, sometimes they were things that I noticed that we replayed together. I was aware, I became aware, that the mouth is this terribly provocative sight. And I think, you know, that's where adults read it in a way that children never would. Um, but I really maintained a kind of adherence to the innocence of the project and let that kind of adjunct connotation arrive through the audience response. So I was aware of it, but I wasn't driven by that. So I'm not, I wasn't deliberately um, making poisonous, cancerous uh, tongues, nor was I deliberately playing with the kind of sexual ambiguity. I was making them really playful. So the use of colour is playful and, uh, for me, really enjoyable. So those, uh, and I think kind of driving it through the process was also really interesting to me because I, I used very simple mechanisms. I had a, um, I used a little ring flash. I wanted to use light in a way that was really de-romanticised everything. So this very few pictures with complex shadows in them. So you've got, you've got light, hitting something and kind of giving every surface a sort of sense of glowing luminosity. I um, translated it through scanning into a kind of digital form. And it, without really deliberately trying to wind up the colour, everything along the way just seemed to arrive with a slightly edgy, kind of heightened sense of colour and light that I really just loved. And I think I loved it for the oddness of its you know, I, I'm staying true to building the list for my own record as a mother, for my own kind of position as a reporter of the everyday moment. But loving its misreading.